Welcome back guys, going to be doing a uh, something a little bit different, um, actually never did a video on Airsoft, but today I'm going to, this is a, a one of my guns, it's a D-Boys high velocity, I forget what it is, I think it's just around 400, which is pretty good for concerning it's a lower end gun. Uh, there's a couple things, this is not stock, first off the carry handle has been removed and replaced with a red dot sight in the front, we have flash hider off and a mock 3D printed mock suppressor which is just there to pretty much cover the end of the barrel as well as the sight has been cut down so it doesn't get in the way of the red dot sight up here on the up here on the foregrip or pistol grip we have a mm, uh, I think a die tack I believe it is um, pistol grip and the cool thing about this one is is it's um, aluminum I believe it's aluminum or it's a really hard plastic um, cap with this big screw on the end which means there's no there's none of those little tiny metal plates that you have you lose. The cool thing about this grip is it has extra space side to side. You don't really notice it in your hand, but inside you do because the motor fits a little bit looser and you don't have the and the wires have room to come up through the sides. That way they don't get tight and your motors are not adjusting right, yeah, whatnot. It's an awesome hand grip and I believe it's only like ten bucks nice and comfortable and so yeah I really recommend that so we're going to be pretty much just stripping this thing down cleaning everything up doing a few little mods make sure we have 100 percent compression in our gearbox um, right now the bucking is bad I'm gonna have to, I'm just gonna redo the hop clean the hop up make sure it's um, feeding right and make sure the bucking is bad and not just has dirt stuck in there somewhere so just gonna be taking apart down to the gearbox cleaning everything up and putting it all back together. So let's start it here in the back. And we're down to our gearbox. As you can see, this gearbox uses bearings, which they're not um, bad. I mean, they're just bearings, but again, um, bearings, um, they're just one more point of failure, you could say. Uh, I prefer bushings, but if you're going to use bearings, I like the 8mm bearings just because they're bigger, and so therefore they have um, bigger parts and stuff, so they tend to break less. But these bearings, for the most part, are good. Um, if you're going to do any kind of um, big mods to this um, gun or anything, I'd recommend swapping those out for bushings, but they're good for now. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five screws on the bottom, and then four Phillips head screws on the top. Go ahead and take all of them out, and then we'll be ready to pop our gearbox apart. Now take it apart. I like to stick a screwdriver in the end just so the spring don't go flying out. And then hold down here. And just slowly wiggle it up. You might be able to hear stuff pop. That's okay. Alright. It does look like the sector gear was engaging the the air nozzle, so that's good. Nothing's broken inside. Just before this thing goes flying, just put your screwdriver in the end, lift up. And re release the spring tension. And go ahead and slide your piston or your spring out. And the spring guide, just lay that to the side. So pretty much what we're going to do is just take the gearbox apart, clean it up, and I'll show you what the parts look like all cleaned up. And I'll talk more about 
what we're going to do to make sure we have the best compression and best shimming. So I'll take this apart and be right back. Okay, I got my gearbox all cleaned up. Got the two halves here. Got all the gears and got all the other parts. But one thing I did, went ahead and did, is polish your cylinder. This is just a standard brass cylinder. So if you have one of these, go ahead and polish it. If it's never been polished before, I recommend using a Dremel with a polishing wheel and the hard polishing compound and just going in there and just dremeling it until you think it's good and then just dremel a little bit more. Basically you want to be able to see yourself in there because that means it's as smooth as possible or is good enough pretty much and that means you'll be able to get a nice 100% air seal and then if you want you can go ahead and do the outside and then every time after, pretty much every time I redo, re-clean a gearbox I guess you could say, is I use something called this I'm not sure how you pronounce that but and just use it on a paper towel and just go ahead and polish the inside and outside again just to make sure there's no um, corrosion that's built up from any moisture getting in there or anything like that so that's just one thing to do to help improve your air seal I'll talk about that later but first off we want to get onto shimming so you'll need your bearings here are my bearings um, there's the other one now, once you start ship, once you put your bearings in, you want to make sure you always use let the bearings that you put in here always stay at the same spot. That way, um, every bearing might be a little bit different. So, um, when you shim it, and then you your bearings get swapped around or something, then it might mess up your shimming again. So, just go ahead and put all your bearings in, and make sure you keep the same bearings throughout the whole shimming process. So, first off, we'll start off with with our spur gear. You might be able to hear that it sounds a little bit of scraping. It should be pretty much silent. But another thing you want to check is if you hold it and around the back, you want to make sure the shaft is flush with the bearing. And right now it's sticking up about a sixteenth of an inch or maybe less, I don't know. But just add shims till it's about as flush or just about flush with the bearing. That actually is about good. And if you can hear, well you should be able to hear, but it's pretty much dead silent now. I can hear the bearings a little bit, but it's pretty much silent. So now make sure you keep that shim with there, with that sector gear or spur gear. Now go ahead and do the same for the sector gear. Make sure the shaft isn't, yeah, the shaft is still sticking through the back. So add a shim. The reason you don't want any shaft sticking out the back is because when you, if you do, you'll have your um, tappet plate up against that, and that'll push the tappet plate out. Or sorry, not the tappet plate, the um, selector plate. And what that'll do is you'll actually push your body apart, and then it won't select the firing modes right. So just make heads up on that. Mm, that's about good right there and you can hear that's quiet as well. You usually have to add a shim anyway to um, make sure the shim the gears up just a little bit so they um, move silent. Now for the um, bevel gear, you don't have to worry about the shaft because it doesn't anywhere near the sector or selector plate, but you do want to shim it according to the spur gear. So put your go ahead and put your spur gear in. And then put your bevel gear in. And you pretty much what you want is you want the teeth to be is you don't want them to be offset at all. You want them to be as um, lined up with each other as possible so that you get as much surface contact as possible and it spreads the load around. And also this little, this little lip on the gear bevel gear here, let's see, right there, it drops down. You don't want that little lip scraping on the sector gear at all. So just make sure you shim that. Same with the spur gear, and then you want to shim them so the gears don't move up and down at all in the gearbox. So I'm gonna go ahead and shim this gearbox. There's lots of videos if you need more info on it. Um, on YouTube, there's tons of videos about this subject, and 
So if you need more info, check those out. I'm going to go ahead and show them this gearbox and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done.